Now looking at any given comment, we see that we are missing the user from this detail, right? So this information, this API information would be used inside of an app somewhere and we should be able to actually see that particular user say stuff. So if we actually look at our posts um, and we click on one of them, we see that it says the user and then the timestamp and all that stuff. But in the API, on the other hand, we have the timestamp, but we just don't have the user. So in this one, we're gonna make it so the user actually shows up. Now, by default, we could just jump in to our detail serializer and just add a user in here and say user and refresh. And we see the user ID. We could do that exact same thing inside of the child comment so we can see that user as well. So then the child comment has it also, um, which is a start. We could also use a serializer method field to actually get the name of that user by using the object and all that stuff. But instead what we're gonna do is create a serializer specifically for the user and use a serializer within another serializer, which is something you definitely can and probably should do. So inside of our counts API, we are gonna come in here. So this is serializers API, um, or excuse me, accounts.api.serializers. This is where we are. And we're gonna create a new one and I'm gonna call it class user detail serializer. And this is a model serializer, class meta, model equals to user, and fields equal to, well, whatever fields we wanna include. In this case, I'm just gonna include username and email. Of course, email is not necessary. It might just be username. That might be all the thing that you wanna show. You also might wanna have first name, and last name if for some reason you wanted to display those things. So the user detail serializer, we're gonna go ahead and copy this and we're gonna import it into our comments API serializer. So from accounts.api.serializers import user detail serializer. And we're gonna scroll down to the child comment serializer and we'll say user equals to that with parentheses. And we're gonna do the exact same thing for the detail. And we're gonna go back into our detail and refresh. And now what we see here is it's got user, username, email, first name, and so on, um, which is pretty cool. So it's actually showing us the data that we need. Something I don't like is down here, it's also allowing me to change this stuff, which is not something that I really wanna do, right? So let's say for instance, I did change it. So let's just change it real quick. And it says a user with that username already exists. So it's giving us these errors, right? I don't actually wanna change the user details like this. I would want to make its own endpoint to change those details. So what we want to do for the serializer is we're going to say read only equals to true. And we're going to do that for the child comment as well. So read only is equal to true there. We save, refresh, and now the ability or the default ability to update that just won't happen, uh, which is cool. But the content is still there. And if I changed anything about this content, it would, it would still change accordingly, um, just as we did before. But now we actually have some user information. So this in particular, we could put on our posts as well. So if we look in posts, API, serializers, um, and we look at user here, right? So we did the serializer method field in the post list. That's not something we wanna do anymore. We actually wanna use the other serializer, the user detail serializer, same as what we did with comments. So I'm gonna copy this import, bring it into this post API view here. And we're gonna just come down to the user uh, detail and we'll say read only equals to true. We're gonna copy this and paste it down here as well. All right, we can get rid of this get user method. We no longer need that for either one of them. And now if we look at our posts, and of course not that one, but posts, we've got, now we can see the user in a different level, right? We can actually use it on, um, you, by using a serializer. So then when we change that serializer, it can change to all the places that we want all at once and not have to worry about that, that method field that we, what, that, we just, that we created earlier using the posts. Um, so that's the user detail serializer. Of course, you can put it anywhere you need for the specific user. 
Um, and I would be careful though that you put the user serializer. You don't always have to put it, especially if you're saving it. We've already handled that stuff as far as the requested user is concerned. Um, but that's pretty much it as far as the user detail is there. Now what we need to do is actually update our token. So actually make an authentication token that allows us to connect with a client by using this token because what we've been doing so far is using a authentication type of the Django session, right? So now all we have to do is complete that token and then we can really start using this API, um, whether it's in an iOS app, an Android app, an Angular app, a React app, it doesn't really matter. But once we have a way to do the authentication side with every request, um, which will make a lot more sense once we actually implement it, then we'll be able to do that. So if you have any questions on what we did here with the user detail, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.